practicing how to hit the volleyball, playing tennis and porky and basketball and stuff like that. So it brought us closer together as a family, you know, prayer, activities, laughing, talking and stuff like that. And in reference to family, um, family is, it has helped us a lot. Family, friends, loved ones. Um, for instance, it can be expensive. You need the support. And family was there to provide when we were need, when, when, when we needed most. Like they say, a friend in need is a friend indeed. I can truly say I know what that means. I've had co-workers, we have family members that were there to help us. Godfather, the best godfather in the world. <laughs> They've been the physical support, financial support, and even school. Because amongst all of this, I've seen God's blessing and favor on her life. Um, every, every school she has went to was so supportive. Starting from Lewis Yard, where she was, when she was diagnosed, the teachers were so supportive. Moving on to Moritz Moore, the students, in the, and that's when it was at its worst. Some days she walked on, on crutches. I wanted to get a wheelchair for her because it was really bad. And she'd say, no, we'll push her in the little chair. And then during the summer, it got at its worst. She had to use a wheelchair. It was that bad, that bad. And that's where family came in. And raise your hand, baby. You got to do it. <laughs> Amen. She could not do that before. She could not do that before her hand was restricted. <laughs> Look at my baby now. <laughs> she can raise her hand. <laughs> she can. Amen. She can raise her hand. She can praise the Lord. She can dance. <laughs> Betty. I saw, I saw it in church. They watched the little children dance. My heart breaks because my baby couldn't dance anymore. But now, today, today, my baby is dancing. My baby can raise a hand. My baby can play sports. And one thing I want to say in spite of the obstacles, baby girl has been on top in the classes. On top, on top, on top. Amen. Back to family members. I know going into high school, we knew she needed to be in a school that could cater to her because at that point she was in wheelchair and, and stuff like that. And we didn't know how things were going to work. Family members stepped in to help. Got a partial scholarship at LIS and family members paid the rest. Yeah. And there she gets the privilege that she needs, everything that she needs. She's doing an awesome job. I have seen God work, you know. How can you know God is a healer if you haven't seen him heal? How can you know he's a provider if you have not seen him provide? Oh, God is good. God is real. And I told her, I said, baby girl, you go into this storm, man. But guess what? The bigger the storm, the bigger the blessing. We don't know what your outcome is. I said, but this same storm will cause you to reach lives for the kingdom. quite a testimony and you know sometimes I think we've we've seen God miraculously heal and we know he's a sovereign father who can heal and sometimes we've seen him said wait and I think you're in a waiting mood, mode in some, uh, to some degree um, maybe you want to share about how, how you continue to trust in the midst of uh, this waiting period well let me let me just say this you know with the arthritis that she has, you know, it, it, uh, it's the good tissues fighting against the bad tissues in her body, right? And all of her limbs, all of her joints, it affects. It affects her feet, it affects her knees, it affects the elbows, it affects the wrists, it affects her groin, like almost every part on her body, you know? like. My wife said it got so bad where she couldn't walk, you know? But in the midst of it, in the midst of it, um, I find hope and peace, joy. I remember Sister Nancy's son, Kaval. He, he said to me, because when she had dengue fever several years ago, he said, he said, man, she's sick. 
She said, read some healing scriptures over her. Because you know the word also brings healing. You know, and I'll never forget that. And in her room now, when she, when the, the inflammation, you know, when it get inflamed or what's not, we got scriptures all up on her wall, and she would read the scriptures, quote it, and believe it or not, I kid you not, when, we, when she read the scriptures, and I say, uh, you know, a little prayer over her, within 15 to 30 minutes, she's calm, and, and you know, she could, you know, she be able, she could get a little bit of sleep. But, it, but it's been hard. It's been hard. You know, when she said she don't want to die, I swear it got, it got a little, little tricky. She said, I don't want to die. We started talking about death and, you know, tell her she don't have to worry because she'll be in a, in a safe place. But, man, to see how she's doing in school. I know when I, when I get a toothache, I can't move and it's, it's painful. And to see that she's going through all of this and, and could graduate the top of her class. Report card day. I just want to interject. First report card. Three A minuses, four A's. That's your girl. Listen, she has written a song. My wife had it copyrighted. She's written, sang her own song. I mean, this girl, she is so talented. I, I just can't believe it. So I know God has, God has a lot of things planned for her. We named her Ariel for a reason. It's Lioness of God, you know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Just want to add something to the pain. Um, one night she was in so much pain. I said, baby, how are you doing? What's it like? I said, what does it feel like? She, you want to tell them what it feel like? Please tell them. It felt like a hammer was hitting my foot. So that's quite a bit of pain for a child. So we would just cover her, rub her, you know, and pray over her. Family members pray, and we want to thank you all for praying for us. We really appreciate it because we have seen a huge difference in a matter of a month. God is so good. Yes. Yes. A part of our coming back story has been that we never know who's sitting next to us in the church. We never know who's sitting next to us in the job, what our neighbors are going through, but we can keep praying for them. And I'm going to ask Pastor Sidney just to share as we close out how, how important it has been to keep moving and keep praying in the midst of, of, of such a difficult time because it's easy to um, look back when you're out of it and praise, but in the midst of it, how has that been for you? You have to know that. You have to know that God is bigger than your problem. Point blank. You know, and for me, this was also a faith booster. You know, it's also a prayer booster. Because I've learned, I've learned something about prayer. Is that, you know, a lot of times when we pray, we just pray and we ask, Lord, I need this, and Lord, I need that, and Lord, help me with this, help me, help me, help me. Lord. We just bark stuff out at God. But I've learned that, you know what the Lord really wants? The Lord really wants you to worship him and say how great he is and how powerful and how mighty he is. Because once you could say that and you believe that, then you know that your situation is small things because he got that under control. You, you understand what I'm saying? So that's, that's the most important thing, you know? Prayer and worshiping God and knowing what it is and then all these other little things, they'll be added on to you. And I want to say this, Mr. Rule. You know, we, we still go into the journey, but I know regardless of whatever the situation or whatever the outcome is, I know that God is perfect. Amen. Amen. Point blank. God is perfect. We, we're going to offer a word of prayer for the Bullard family uh, with that thought that God is perfect and sovereign. So let's please join me as I pray for them. Father, we thank you for the testimony of young Sidrell, for our parents. Father, thank you for how you're working in their lives. We pray for our healing. Father, you've asked us to bring those who are sick to you through prayer. So we ask that you would touch her, that you would raise her up.